microphone's up there, not here. Right? Oh, okay. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So I don't have to worry about what I say. Yeah. <laughs>
special guest. Um, we're all here to help benefit the fort, and I'm going to go ahead and we're, we're going to have a language lesson today. Who speaks German? Anybody? Oh yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, the gentleman to my right, and I want you to practice. We're going to repeat one time. Wir kommen. No. Are you kidding me? Wake up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, Joe, watch that fishing at 4 o'clock in the morning. Can you believe that? And he's got that nasty carp bait. Is that the home Yeah, it's all home It's got the chives. You can see it. <laughs> hey, what do you want to do? I'm not buying it. I'm not going to buy it either. What do you want to do? I don't know. Just here, I got an idea. Watch the watch. They fall for this every time. Grandpa's up top of the Now, look now. When the fish pull on it, now just do it a couple of times. I'll try to trick you. Are you serious? Skipper Pete, look. I know what I'm doing. Now, they'll pull it a couple of times for you. <sighs> okay. So the fish are down. They pull about It's a small fish. What are they going to do with anything? Well, if I jerk it back, it's going to come out of the water and hit me in the face. <laughs> and then Grandma said something I'll never forget. <laughs> Your grandmother and I were so happy when our kids got old enough to have their own kids, knowing that they would ask the amount of questions that you've asked this entire morning. <laughs> we just didn't know you'd come back and ask us. <laughs> I love you, Grandpa. Just not right now. <laughs> Throw the line on the bobber goes down. Down for the count. They're running with it. <laughs> I get a fish. Don't crank so fast. Really, you want to work the fish. Work the fish. I don't even know what to do with that statement. Work the fish. Work the fish. I say that on an English club. You reel a little bit, then you let them go. And you reel a little bit, then you let them go. And you reel a little bit, then they come out of the water and you get the net. What do you know, damn net? It's only foot there. Hush! I get the fish up for the water. You know what kind of fish it was? A loafer was a shoe. <laughs> Grandpa said they don't get a lot of loafers in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> then we went hunting. This is the best part. I love this because I've never been so traumatized as a child when we went hunting. I knew hunting in Nebraska would equate to the cord getting caught on a hook. <laughs> <laughs> That hunting in Nebraska would be something like hunting deer, right? If you can't hit them with the car, just shoot them. <laughs> That's fair enough. Or hunting birds, which if you have a shotgun, please shoot the one that's been flying around in here for the last half hour. <laughs> if you didn't notice, there's a bird here the size of my head. <laughs> and bats. Unfortunately, there's no snakes or my aunt Donna had to bust them. Okay, so we're going to go hunting. Now, for those of you who don't know Grandpa, he could hunt anything. Grandpa, he didn't care if it, if it was an animal, it's fair game. We were going to go gopher hunting. Now, if you haven't been gopher hunting, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I personally believe that gophers are byproducts of the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, bear with, you'll know why in a minute, I'll tell you why. Gophers, I think, are Chinese because they get in the land, who doesn't know what they do? They get in the outer offices and make mounts. Now, I'm going to tell you a whole story behind that. Grandpa, we get the 55 Bel Air. We drive out to the Gopher Field. Grandpa will be driving. He'll put that car in third gear at five miles an hour. <laughs> Grandpa, why don't you just leave it in first? Just, just let me drive. Well, why don't you drive? You just don't know how to shift. Nobody shifts in the last gear. You're not even going, hush! I'll leave you with your grandmother. Oh, yeah, that'll be a little boot. At least I'll get to eat. <laughs> Cola cheese. We get out to the field, Zellinger's Farm. I don't know, is there a Zellinger right here, anybody? No? We used to go out to Zellinger's Farm to kill gophers on his property. We get out to the farm, we get on the hills, we're driving around. Now, this is my grandpa. He, this is a passionate hunter. All right, now, look, now, we're going to get out here. I want you to take this rod, and we're going to dig for gophers. Dig? Where's a gun? No, no, watch it. We're gonna get down here. All right, now that's what I want you to do. We take this rod, we stick it in there. Now when it goes down quick, you got a gopher hole. You dig out the gopher hole. But first you gotta wash your hands. You got a wet wipe? <laughs> no, you wanna get that, that scent of human off of you. You wanna get the scent of the human off of you. So you gotta get your hands out of the dirt. <laughs> Never have I washed my hands in the dirt. <laughs> Never, till that day. Wash my hands in the dirt. <laughs> Get our hands all washed in the dirt so we don't smell like people. And I told Grandma, I said, what about the rest of you? Okay, look, that's just about enough of that smart hour. <laughs> we dig the hole. Grandma goes to the trunk of the car. Now, for those of you with a history here in Davidson, you probably know about this, but I'm going to tell you next. He goes to the 
truck out of Bel Air, he opens it up, and he gets out a contraption. I have never seen Gray, elongated barrel. And I thought, what are you going to catch a gopher with that? Comes over and goes, now listen, your grandpa's got a new thing now to catch gophers. Now, originally I envisioned gophers as the kind that you see on the movie with Chevy Chase. One of their, I'm alright. <laughs> Nobody worry about me. Really cool gophers, but that wasn't the case. So, we get the thing out, and apparently it's a gopher gun. How many of you have seen this thing? Ah, uh, there's a couple of you. It carries a 410 shotgun shell. I'm like, what kind of gophers are we hunting? Super-sized big gophers? Now, off in the distance, I'm announced to my grandfather, gophers are watching us. He don't know because, you know, he's good at hunting. He don't worry about that. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, is it that damn? Where's my shotgun? Where's he at? So we dig the hole, we put the gopher gun in, and then we have to camouflage the gopher trap. Now, if I'm not mistaken, gophers dig with their eyes closed. That's correct. <laughs> Little slits, they're digging, they don't see anything. I'm like, why are we camouflaging it? He did me. I guess that was the end of talking to me about talking too much. We get the gopher trap in the hole, and what do you have to do to do that? You gotta mark the gopher hole, right? Because you wanna know where you were at. Now. So he gets the pole out, he goes over. Oh, he gets a towel. We're not going to forget where this gopher is. We got a good chance of killing this dog on thing. They're tearing up the crops. Now, for those of you who don't know about gophers, they dig mounds in alfalfa fields, and what happens is if you're going sideways and you hit a dirt mound, it breaks them over. So we want the gophers out. So he puts a red out of his shirt. <laughs> yeah. Puts a red out of his shirt on his thing. All right, that's going to mark where we were at. Okay, don't forget that. I look off to the side, and there's those gophers where they're going, Oh, Rook! They put the red apple piece shot. We're going to take it away, he go away. <laughs> Gopher runs out as we're driving off. Oh, where I put the apple piece shot? Put over here. <laughs> oh, then forget. We come back out, drive around the field, Grandpa gets out of the car. Oh, go on, I go shrimp. Skipper, Pete, come here. Where'd we put that thing? I'm like, no, we didn't. Yeah, Grandpa, we did. I said, yeah. Can't you find the trap? <laughs> Never did find that gopher gun. I tell you, it's been a tree trying to figure out that whole hunting thing. The other thing I got going on is cows. What's wrong with y'all? Is Willow in here? Call check. Call. Did I say it right? Willow's not here? Oh, that. Well, how about? Call check. They watch me when I come home. I came home the other night, and now I know you probably don't believe this, but this is true now. They're out there, and they're sitting there out in the field, and my neighbor's field, and they're, you know, reading Sky Moss Magazine from Delta, <laughs> smoking cigarettes. Oh, God, here comes that guy again. Hey, guys, that's this guy. Hey, guys. Let's all get down easy. It's coming, yeah. We gotta pretend like we're cows again. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Hey, you know what, guys? Let's scare him this time. Yeah, he's by himself. I have no clue what that was. <laughs> nope, we're not on time. Oh, hey, who's got cell phones on? Are you a doctor? It's that, it's that oh, nobody's gonna answer. Okay. That's okay. I won't call you out. I promise. Wake up like this. I come home and the cows are over there. They're always watching me. What do they want? Where's, I wish Willow was here. I could ask her. Those cows are always watching me. So my friend said, well, if the cows are watching you, what you need to do is you go push them down. Go cow take them. <laughs> okay. I'm a new to this state, so I'll figure it out. I'll go cow take them. <laughs> go, and I go over there and I'm thinking, I'll sneak up on those cows. I'll get out there and I'll just do this. <laughs> okay, there they are. They're all sleeping. I heard they sleep standing up. I hope that's true. I get over to the electric fence. I know this because.
because I've been shot twice. Thank you, Laverne. <laughs> I thought the aluminum cans were there for drinks. <laughs> well, yeah, you all, yeah. That's a true sad, but true. <laughs> now, as a guy, because guy, we're men, right? We're men. We're going to climb over the fence or climb under the fence. Me being me, I thought I've already been hit once, I'm not climbing over the fence. We'll climb under. Excuse me, we'll go under. We can't climb under the fence, because we're men. I get under the fence, and there they are. I'm going to get my revenge. I'll push one of them down. Sneak over, and... <laughs> Who knows about these four-wheeling hickey things? 
These kids do things. You can only do so much with them. I didn't know you couldn't lift the bucket up so I didn't dump the dirt on yourself. What kind of sad joke is that? <laughs> you need to tell people that, even if you're a guy, because guys got to talk to guys, but you can't have the women talking to the guys. Because women will make you feel stupid. Honey, I tell, how, what kind of person does it take to figure out that the bucket goes all the way up? You were watching it. Well, I didn't know it dumped.
Thank you.
these kind of events can go on all the time at this place. It's a great opportunity for us to come here, come together with our friends and family, and enjoy this theater. So Lenny Lieber this evening, please take an opportunity to tell your friends, tell your family, tell your people that you work with, what a great asset this theater is to the community, that we can do these shows all the time. Um, as far as a comedy thing, you can write me a letter out of the empty street to say, Mike, let Victor come back. <laughs> it's all good. You know what I'm going to talk to you about right now? Women in Nebraska. Where are my married women at? Clap. Married women, clap. Okay, where are my married men at? Clap. Now, hold up, folks. we got a sad disparity. There was less clapping on the men's side. <laughs>
There's my testament to having been to this town a few times. There you go. Now, look, now, you know, listen, let me ask you something. How was work? Yeah, good, good. And how was your day? Let me see over here. I'm going to see if I can show you my love. Yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't click anything else. And the kids ate all the mac and cheese. Yeah, I know that TV dinner's probably not that good. But you know, I love you. I love you. I, what's the matter? The corn is frozen. Should I get a manager? Should I get the manager? <laughs> Okay, you just eat that one. Well, I'm not mad at you. I just eat the corn. Go ahead, honey. <laughs> you know, it's hard. I know. Hey, listen. Um, I know you were late this time. You were probably at work all night long. I mean, it's only, what is it, 10.30 now? Oh, psh. Anyway, um, well, honey, I was at work. You were. <laughs> Whew. Jen just called me and said that you and Jack were out at the club in Fremont hanging out having a cocktail. <laughs> After uh, work, we stopped for uh, a drink. Oh, really? Go ahead and breathe on me. <laughs> no, no, honey, this way. <laughs> well, yeah, I, uh, my, my breast probably, but no, honey, blow. <sighs> Spearmint gum. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, the only thing colder than that meal will be your bed when you go to bed tonight. Okay, don't play again. All right, good night. <laughs> All you ladies know, don't even try. We get home at night. Married women have the keys, they have the checkbook, they have the credit card, and now they have the software. <laughs> oh yeah, you're double click away from your marriage. Watch out. Honey, you know what I thought this afternoon? In case anything happens to you, I put everything in my name on the account. I went online and just did it. Well, how did you do that? I use your password, your social security number, and your birthday. Because I, I remember those things. Remember last year when you forgot my birthday? I, I didn't forget it, I just didn't write it down. Yeah, watch out. Here's another thing for you. My Aunt Dorothy is here this evening. She is 93? Six. Thank you. Guys, I don't know those kind of things. I didn't write it down. My Aunt Dorothy's here. She told me she went fishing with my uh, grandfather one time, and here's a sense of coolness and a sense of passion about doing things that ladies do in Nebraska. Grandpa says, we're going to Minnesota, and I'm taking my sisters with me, and I'm going to show them how to fish. Oh, yeah, you go ahead, Grandpa, you show They get out on the lake. Grandpa says, now look now, Dorothy, I want you to drop the anchor when I say drop the anchor. Isn't that right? Drop the anchor when I, because that's the spot we want to fish in. Wherever I say you drop that anchor, you drop it, and we're going to fish right there. Okay, well, you know. My Aunt Dorothy, bless her heart, she's going to help. She's not going to make it difficult. Okay, you tell me when you're ready, Arlene, and I'll drop the anchor. Drop the anchor! There she goes. They're sitting there fishing. Dorothy's smiling, they're enjoying the sun, and Grandpa's doing his thing. Did you drop the anchor? I dropped the anchor. Did you drop, you dropped it where I said? I dropped it where you said. You sure you dropped the anchor? Because we're still drifting. I dropped the anchor. What'd you tie it to? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Now here was my Aunt Dorothy's beautiful advice to Grandpa. Well, since we're drifting to that side of the lake, all we can do is when we get over there, we'll just hang out for a little bit, and when the wind changes, we'll just drift right around. <laughs> okay? There said my grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> That's women being cool for you in Nebraska. They have got it going on. Lord, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you another thing, too, that guys can't do. We can't drive, can we? That's a God's honest truth. I bought a truck when I moved here. I mean, I had a pickup when I came up, but I didn't have four-wheel drive. You're going to Nebraska, you better four-wheel drive. Hey, hey, you go to the Midwest, you better have four-wheel drive. They got snow, 12 feet thick. You go to Nebraska, you better get a yellow truck. You won't be able to see it if you get stuck in the snow. Troopers will drive right by you all day long. Okay, I'll go get a yellow truck. Four-wheel drive. I go get the yellow truck. The only problem was when I worked at Applebee's, everybody came in. We saw your truck. We knew you were working. I'm one of your distant cousins. Can I have a free chips and salsa? You can eat all the 
most chips in salsa you want, but don't ask me for no New York strips. Everybody will get upset. <laughs> okay, so I get the truck, I get the four-wheel drive. I got here in October. Guess what happened? There was snow. Now, I honestly have never driven in snow. So I copied everybody else. You're driving 55, I'm gonna drive 55. You go sliding off the road, I'm probably gonna go sliding off the road. I'm driving home on 80, going westbound, a semi vroom, passes me. Okay, well that's not good. No, you don't. I got a 5.4 liter, buddy. I read the bed. You know, semis weigh a whole lot more than an F-150 without anything in the back. And if I had known that before I tried to follow that truck, I wouldn't have gone backwards in a 180 into the ditch. Now, here's the good part. Because I'm a man, I read. Not a lot, but I read. I didn't know how to put the truck in the front wheel drive. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the Mini in an I-80, about halfway to Seward, in the ditch, backwards. And you know what, during the whole time it was going backwards into the ditch, it was one of these. And snow was just everywhere. Everywhere. And I'm like, do I turn the windshield wipers on? I'm going backwards. Should I call 911? Do I want to call my mother? I should go. My mother, you know, mothers are wonderful. I love y'all, I'll tell you what, but you just can't help but go, I told you not to drive that fence. I told you. A lot of you don't listen to me is beyond me. Your father doesn't listen either. That's why the cops are no longer in his name. The Chevy, the MasterCard, the Visa, the American Express, the boat, the house, everything. In my name. He can't even walk out of the house now. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have to help him to the car. Well, you go ahead and help him. I didn't want to call her. So that left my Aunt Donna, who's here, and I knew she'd greet me. Called her already once at 2 o'clock in the morning because I went to my cousin's house to sleep in the night. Sleep in the night, that was good, right? <laughs> Boy, that Ritalin's wearing off quick. Called my Aunt hey, um, I know it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Are you busy? Well, yeah, I am, you old ball hawk. I'm sleeping. What are you doing calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning? Now, I don't know what ball hawk means. It's check for something. If you know what it means and it's offensive, I apologize. I asked her tonight and she wouldn't tell me. They were busy talking about it. I like, oh, Mike, I'm going to do that show. Tell this joke. No, we're not telling no jokes. I already gave it to her. So I'm stuck in the snow backwards and I'm watching people go by and I'm like, well, excuse me, hello. Oh, jeez. Flash the high beam, somebody high beam me back. <laughs> I get out the manual, I look up four-wheel drive. <clears throat> four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, four Add oil. That's not four-wheel drive. <laughs> Turn the pages. I get to the part where it says there's some sort of knob now because men are too stupid to pull a lever back into four-wheel drive that you just turn and it goes to, to four-wheel. All right? So I have this knob. <laughs> so I read the manual and says, all right, to engage four-wheel drive, put the vehicle in park. Oh, I didn't know I was still in drive. <laughs> Alright, we're in park. Now put your foot on the brake and put the truck in neutral, okay? Now take your foot off the brake. Step out of your vehicle. <laughs> well, now that doesn't sound right. That must be for the Chinese. <laughs> oh, here we go. Turn the knob selector switch to four low for dirt that is no more than six inches deep. <laughs> Ooh, it's cold. Okay, that looks about more than six inches. If dirt is more than six inches, put in four low and step out of vehicle. Because I know something's broke. 
Something has got, you don't brag as a guy and, and you haven't broke something. Especially not when you flipped your neighbor's skid steer and traumatized his hogs and have his cows peeing on you. So I get to Seward and there's a sign, and who knows Seward? When you get to the cemetery, the sign says 60 miles an hour. That is the truth. So I saw the sign, so I drove 60. I pull over, I'm not the mood, I got an Applebee's shirt on, I smell like fried food. Let me go. He goes, hi, how are you doing? I'm good, I just wrecked. Did you report it? You know what, that didn't cross my mind at the time I was going back up to 75 miles an hour. I'm sorry, I must have slipped my head and then I was busy doing a hokey but Where are you doing a hokey pokey for? Do you need to put it in four-wheel drive? Yes, I needed to put it in four-wheel drive to do the hokey pokey, okay? What do you want? Well, you're not supposed to go 60 until you get to the sign. Okay, give me a ticket. Oh, I already have. Here you go, just sign right here. Are you kidding me? It's 17 degrees now. Don't you have anything better to do? Nope. <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, you work at Applebee's. No, I don't have any food, and no, I don't have any togo with me, okay? Can I go home now? You're asking me a ticket. It's a warning ticket. Bless his heart. Next day I'm driving home, I go back to a store. The truth. I wait to the sign. I get to the speed limit sign, and I hit the little resume button, because guys are, were too dumb to step on the gas pedal. We just get, they get a little thing. I go 60. He pulled me over again. It's literally 17 degrees. I'm frozen. I'm cold. It took me two hours to get home. I just, you know what? Just whatever. I put the window down. I hand my driver's license. He walks up. He goes, Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm new to Nebraska. I haven't lived in here two months. Is this normal? Oh, well, you know, I was born in here and I saw this yellow truck go by and I figured it was you. <laughs> Okay, do you want something? No, no, kind of cold out here, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's kind of cold. Yes, that's, that's good, you're right, it's cold. Um, I'm Mike. Hi, how are you? Listen, you go on ahead, I just wanted to stop and say hello, you have a good night. I thought, okay, I'm calling my mom. There's no way, because if I was in Atlanta and I got pulled over, they'd have beat me up and then took me to jail twice. Put my window up, get on the road. Is here tonight, but I'll name it later. Years ago, I go over to my neighbors, and I'll just go ahead and say they're wonderful people. Laverne and, Nor uh, Laverne and Norma Kozicek, they're here this evening. Good, good people who have <laughs> weathered lots of crazy stuff with the neighbors. Is that who is that coming over here? Oh God, it's that Michael kid. Just, just tell them, um, just tell them the tractors are all broke. Just tell them, no, no, we have. We love you, but please go. There's the house is just we just were afraid if you touch anything, it's just gonna come down. Just please. You want to help spread the nerve. The bird! They go out, we load. At that time the bird had a hard farm, put the pigs in there, and when I went, now I know I don't know what the laws are here, so I don't want to get them in trouble, but I'm just gonna say this. Apparently when the hogs die, you just throw them in the manure. <laughs> Did you not know that? Oh, yeah. When you come over to my house for a hot dog here. How many hot dogs did we have tonight, guys? My family's up here. I had all kind of ballparks out. Yeah. So needless to say, <laughs> Pat, I don't know, is Pat here this evening? No? Okay. Pat is going to show me how to spread manure. Now, normally I can talk and spread manure. But we're going to... Laughing's <laughs> free. Laughing's free, folks. He's funny, I just don't. <laughs> we go and we take the manure spreader, we throw the pigs on it, which I found terribly disgusting and bad, but that's, you know, life on a farm, and farmers are the backbone of America, so you deal with it. That's the truth. Just like the Saudis think they're running things with oil, but I, I'm not allowed to talk about that, I told Ben I behave myself. 
We put the pigs in the manure, we go out and spread manure. Now, there's a lot of things you gotta do. Who are, is there any farmers with us this evening? Anybody? Frank should be here, John's here. You know that that's, that whole, you have to spend at least a year learning how to hook up stuff. Because <laughs> Pat tried to show it to me, all right, now look, Mike, now look. You gotta put it on the hook, you put the hook down, you close the lever, you put the PTO on, you attach the hydraulic hose, and then what you wanna do is you wanna run the machine, test to make sure it's working, walk back here, check the blades, they're all good, go along the line to make sure there's nothing caught up in the chains, and then get on the tractor. You're kidding me, right? Can't you just drive it like a car? No. We get on the tractor, we go out to the field to spread some manure. <laughs> Pat, bless his heart, lets me drive. He didn't know the future would hold like me tipping over the skid steer, dumping dirt on us. Oh, thank goodness, or he wouldn't let me get near that tractor. We get out in the field, and I'm on the tractor, and I'm having a good time. I've never driven a tractor, I'm sure I'm out there just driving. He's like, okay, the left pedal is for to go left with the tire. You we'll step on it, the tire will stop. You step on the right one, the right tire will stop. But for what reason, I don't know. You push on this one, that starts it. You move this clutch forward, that goes forward. And the big tank in the middle is for propane, it doesn't take diesel. I'll explain that one in a minute. <laughs> well, okay, good. Well, piece of cake. It's easy to operate a tractor. It's a John Deere. I know how to use these things. I'm a guy. Doggone it. I don't need to ask no woman how to drive a tractor. Come on, Pat, you and me. We're going out in the field spreading it over. And it's got a thing of a jigger, which I don't know what you could call it. A thing of a jigger on the handle, so you can like do really quick turns. Go <laughs> this way, and you step on the brake, and you're going that way, and you step on the brake, and you're going that way. So we're driving out in the field, we're spreading manure, just like they did on Green Acres. There's another out to this farm and having a good time, it's a good time, and I'm looking at the manure, good. And there's a hog, probably about a 34, 50 pound hog, I don't know, I was guessing, all just kind of beat up. Kind of guts hanging out, the kind of thing that you really don't want to share with the family, you know, you don't just want to kind of talk about that stuff. He didn't look very happy, he looked like a very sad kind of hog, especially with the guts hanging out. The blades on the back of the manure spreader, <laughs> million miles an hour. And I'm just up there, I'm having a good time. I'm visiting from out of state. What do I care? Never mind the fact that I had new Levi jeans on. And I'm just driving, do 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 do. And Pat's off the tractor, and he's doing what people do when they have somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Go on. Stay far, far away. <laughs> and let, let them go ahead. Well, Mike, you're doing <laughs> Lo and behold, I look back and I turn, and I can't because this tractor doesn't have a cab, that's for rich people. This was just an open air kind of thing. And I turn, I'm not picking on nobody. I don't have a cab on my John Deere board. I asked Ron for one and he said, that's kind of silly, you don't even have an anchor. <laughs> I look back. Oh, 
anymore because it's not a healthy experience for me. <laughs> Pat, on the other hand, can spread all he wants, and I have my testament to seeing hogs fly. <laughs> Make sure. 
sure it worked. Um, we did have to use it, but Beth wants to make sure you all know we are putting it in an elevator. Uh, we're going to take it up a notch to continue to work in a theater, and I believe that elevator is going on Beth, it's the west side, right? Yes. Okay. It's going to be on the west side, and these are just the kind of things we're doing to make sure that this place is, you know, for y'all. For y'all. For y'all. I know y'all say something different. You guys, is it? All I say all y'all because Brad being in Georgia is all y'all. All right, back to the original line. Let me go ahead and finish this up real quick so we can get the folks up here to sing. Please keep in mind, like I said, let your friends know, let your family know, let people know that you encounter, hey, this is a great place. We've got great shows here. We're going to do a lot of other things. Uh, I'll be talking about, about some other stuff we'd like to do to continue to make this a great venue to come to. Folks, would you please give me a warm welcome to invite Janet, Brian, and Victor back to the stage.
second thing when you say, when is going to lose something? Folks, I want to take... <clears throat> Was he not behind me when I walked out of here? <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to just tell you real quick the next song, and I wanted to take a moment to just introduce Victor's here from Germany. He's uh, visiting. He came up here as a treat. Everything he does is his original music. He's actually, the next song he's going to do on the piano, I wanted to tell you, is his own. Um, he wrote it, composed it, and he's going to play that for you. Um, where in the world are you going to go into New York to find someone to come on stage and play their own original material? Just here. So if you please give another warm welcome. Victor's going to go ahead and talk to you. Let's see what you